Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the birch version of the timber pillows. So we're gonna be doing an oak version in a different tutorial so you can get that if you wish as well. So what we have here is that this is actually a round cylinder and it's got a strategic way of making it look like the rings of the log. So to do the birch version I used two balls of this white linen color just like you see and then I used one ball of then this taupe color that you see. So let's uh, begin to just determine this pattern. I've already got most of it done already but I'm gonna show you that and then I'm gonna show you how to get started and etc. So here is the birch log without any stuffing applied to it and what you have is surface overlay that is done afterward. I'm gonna show you some tips about doing that and I actually put a stitch marker here because I'm gonna put another one here and I'm gonna show you how to access that because you have to in order to do surface overlay you have to have the yarn in the inside then pulling it through in order to make it very much like a sewing machine. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna get started on the very edge and it's just a round circle and then once you get that done we're gonna continue. I'm also going to break the rules of this pattern is that I'm going to do a continuous circle around so that there is no slip stitching lines throughout any of this pillow just like you see. And then once we get to the top then we just return back to a regular circle and then we apply and start closing it in. You will need a pillow form today. It's a bolster form pillow. I actually have a pillow here. Um, I've been dragging this pillow around for a long time. I got it on clearance and uh, it's just a pillow that I've never used and I'm gonna use it as is. I'm not gonna take the covering off of this pillow because I don't know what's inside of it. So this will help stabilize this inside of this. So it's gonna be nice and tight and I wanna keep this pillow for my guest room as well. So without further ado, let's get started. You'll need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook and Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn in order to play. In this pattern on page number three, you're going to find the stitch diagram available to do the starting of these birch um, pillows just like you see. The oak pillow also uses the same one for the side so it keeps it kind of consistent. So what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be changing color every other one. You're gonna notice all of these upside down arches. Those are considered back loops and we're, we're, doing, we're creating texture by using that as well. We're not gonna be trimming our yarn in between these rounds. We're gonna carry it across that you'll see and then we're gonna carry on. So for the birch what's gonna happen is that we're gonna create this and then we're gonna extend past this and continue to do the log formation and then at the end we're going to do a reversal of this. So we're actually gonna get more narrow and, and close it in with actually doing decreased stitches on the other side. The oak pillow is different. We're gonna create for these, the oak pillow two of these and then sew them to the outside just like you see. You could technically do that with the birches as well but I think it would be more consistent if, if you finish it off just the way that the pattern is suggesting. So let's begin. So I'm using my Bernat Softy Chunky. Uh, this is the linen color. I know it's white on a white background. It's kind of crazy, right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to slip in our six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook and we're going to chain two. So one and two. Now what we need to do is that we need to apply eight single crochets in the second chain from the hook which is the beginning one and let's just do that. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish that. So let's count out. So we're gonna do one, two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And if you're not sure, you can always count it back. So let's just do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now when you go to slip stitch, here's the thing. You're just gonna insert your hook in first but you're going to grab your next color which will be taupe. I'm just gonna create a slip knot just to get that to secure in and I'm going to use that to pull through. So technically I would use the linen to pull through but I want to change my color so I'm gonna change it here and then we're gonna begin round number two. So let the linen color just fall out of the way and just continue then with this color for the next round. So let's move on to round number two. Round number two, we're gonna chain up one and what we want to do is that we wanna go in the back loops only. So right where it's in the join, you want to use the back loop. So if you're new to crochet, there's two strands. Together they make up a stitch but if you choose the front strand, it's front loop and if you choose the back strand, it's the back loop. And I want you to go in the back loop and I want you to apply two single crochets in the back loop only. This creates texture. So now every one of these stitches all the way around, so there's eight of them, you're going to apply two single crochets into each. So one and two and then continue along. So one and two and do that all the way around and what we can just do then is 
I might as well can do, I might as well just stay with you here on camera now and we'll continue all the way around. Surprisingly these pillows don't take a lot of time to make. Um, this pattern is a year old at this point, you know, actually a year and a half old um, since it came out and I'm just filming now. I always thought it was gonna be a lot harder than it was so I kind of kind of like put it off for a bit but in actual fact I was really quite surprised. So you should have eight groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. How did I know that there was eight? I wasn't counting. So this one here is part of this first one here. So I knew that this last one is not a stitch. When you go to slip stitch it, slip it to the back loop only this time and let it drop and grab your linen color and finish it with a join like that. And now we're gonna start moving up to round number three and beyond but I'm not gonna go all the way rounds with you. I'll give you the set of instructions. To start round number three, chain up one. The first stitch, back loop only, has two single crochets in it and then the next one only has one. So we'll continue back looping. So one single crochet. So the repeat pattern is two into the same one, one and two and then one into the next one. Please do that same rhythm or pattern all the way around. So as we continue around the last stitch is one single crochet by itself and I'm only keeping in count so you're going to join it to the first of the top one. So the back uh, loop only when you go to join let it fall out of the way of the linen and grab up your taupe and switch spots and change it out then for row num round number four. Round number four we're gonna continue then chain up one two single crochets in the first one and then the next two in a row are each by themselves. So one single crochet in the next two. So one and two. Okay, so the repeat pattern then, the next one has two in it. So one and two and then the next two stitches are one each. Please do that same pattern going all the way around for round number four. So we're quickly getting through this. It's not my speed, it's just the size of the yarn and just keeping counts, it's easy. You're gonna come into your last one so there's two uh, in a row by itself which makes sense because there was two to start and then two by themselves. So you're just gonna come to the top of the first back loop only. Drop that and get your linen back up and continue to round number five. There's only six rounds for the total of the sides of these logs. So you're gonna chain up one. So round number five, chain up one two single crochets in the first one like you did before and now this time the next three are by themselves. So we're gonna say one, two and three. Just like that and then you're just going to continue then two into the next one and then three into the next one. Please do that all the way around for round number five. And then I'm going to just slip stitch to the top of the first back loop and switch out then this is round number six that we're going. This is the last round before we transition into the log. So we're going to chain up one and it's gonna be two single crochets in the first one. And so now this time there's going to be nine single crochets in a row. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and then you're going to put two into the same one. So one and two. So the next nine are singles and then the next one is two. Keep doing that same pattern going all the way around for finalizing of round number six for the end of your logs. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of round number six and this time I am going to join it with the regular stitch of the first single crochet. Now if this is the one that is the, the actual oak log you're going to fasten this off, leave an extra long tail so that you can sew this to the side of the bark. If this is the birch version that you're watching you are just going to fasten this color off and you are then going to just grab this color here and we're going to continue then to build it from this particular pot. So the birch here essentially what I've already said is that these are part of it. They're not actually sewn to it. They are actually part of it. So either way you're going to have to make a decision on what you're doing from this point. In this part of the tutorial I'm going to continue then making the logs. So for the birch version what we're going to do is that we're going to get rid of this color here and just kind of fasten it off and you can weave in your ends. 
just in and out and you're going to be bearing that in as you're going to continue then making your logs. So you wanna keep that linen color going and don't put this yarn that you're using very far away because you're gonna be using that then to make the lines that appear. So what I would do if I were you is that I would start taking care of your loose ends at this particular uh, spot. So to take care of the loose ends in this particular one you're going to need an extra large needle because this yarn is so thick is that you can um, it's harder to get into the smaller needles. So an extra big one you just pick them up at a craft store or whatever and just drag it through. Do not let it go to the front side of the pillow and just drag it and just separate some of the, the yarn loops that you have and just enough that it will tangle into itself and when you go to finish this you wanna make sure that you're not leaving too much of a long tail so that it pops out of the pillow and it shouldn't anyway. So what I want you to do is that I want you um, to think about this process as you're continuing along. Once you've got it in and out three times you can safely sew. Now I buried this yarn strand as I went so that one can go as well and you may want to think about I'm getting rid of this one here that you ended with Again, it's just easier to deal with it as you go. So we're also going to then continue now with the birch version of just carrying up and now it's just a straight 17 inch shot of just going round and round. I'm gonna show you how to do it so that you don't have any slip stitching involved. So let's do that next. So as we continue up then we're going to be then transitioning this into attaching and starting with this linen going all the way around. There is no slip stitching. Do you see these sent, uh, surface overlays? You can make a decision. I did mine after this whole 17 inches was done but I would think about doing it probably midway through. It's just easier and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment as well um, on why I think that you should do it as you, as you do it and not wait to the end. It's up to you. You can make a decision that suits your lifestyle. So let's begin to work on the side of your particular log. So let's begin the side of the log. You insert it into any one of the stitches. Well as long as it's close to where the linen is finishing here and then just pull it through to start. And then what I want you to do, this is an ad lib from the pattern. So this is just so that you don't have any slip stitching. Just chain up one and single crochet into the first one and then single crochet into the next and then start doing your half double crochet. Oh keep it in the back loop only as well. So you wanna stay in the back loop only for this whole thing. So you just back loop only just half double crochet and now you're going to do half double crochets in the back loops going all the way around. Okay, so the way that I had you started is that it's gonna be easier for it to join so it doesn't look so obvious in the end. So one half double crochet in each going all the way around. When you get all the way back around what I want you to do is that you're going to continuously now go in a complete circle. So do not slip stitch. Just immediately go to the first single crochet and just half double crochet right into it and just pull everything nice and tight. Nice and tight and it will settle in and continue now to half double crochet then continuously. You will probably, you will go through two balls of this yarn as you're going all the way around uh, up into the 17 inches. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna create one more um, around on this. So and then I'm going to sh show you how to do the surface overlay that appears. So it's just the 17 uh, inches. Once you get your 17 inches I will meet you back here, here in just a moment uh, once we get that done and I will show you how to complete that off so that it looks consistent on the other side so that you don't have any slip stitches. So after you get your 17 inches high in order to have it in balance it won't look so obvious like this when you get 17 inches away. So what you wanna do is the final two stitches you wanna do as a single crochet when you're satisfied with the 17 inches and then just slip stitch to the next and then you'll be done like that. So you're going to then move it when you're completing the other side of the bark we're gonna immediately move to this taupe color. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want to give you some options. I want to show you how to do the surface overlay because I would do it as I went uh, versus doing it at the end and there's advantages. So I'm gonna show you how it's done using this and then I'm gonna show you on the other sample on what it's like to go through all the way the project, uh, project just to give you an idea on how to manipulate the yarn. To do the surface overlay what you wanna do is leave a long strand like this. You do not wanna create a slip knot to do that so leave a long strand. 
you need to have this yarn on the inside of the log. So when you have 17 inches you have to slide your hand all the way in there. I will show you a trick on that in a moment. So you're going to put your hook on the outside wherever you want to start it. So you can see the photograph on how they did it. I applied a lot more to mine than the photograph has but that's a creative's choice. And you want to insert See where you see this little gap just above this line? Well you have a ton of these lines all the way in your 17 inches. Just insert into one of them and pull a loop through. And let the straggler fall towards the inside. And you wanna keep this yarn and your hand will be hidden in behind and you wanna keep it on the inside. You are going to dive to the next hole and just reach in behind and you will feel it and pull through. Now this one is a little loose so you can just use your hand and just tighten it up a little bit and when you go to sew this into position it will, you can also do that. So immediately jumping to the next section just grabbing the yarn from behind, pull it through and then pull through. So immediately going. So it's just an eyeing up of an idea on how you wanna do it. So I think I dropped a, a ply there so I wanna retry. So be consistent, you know this is an accessory and add on to the point. It doesn't add to the structure, it just is more visual and you are going to then just go as long as you need to go. So I wouldn't go all the way around, I just go in little uh, pieces here and there. Um, it might be easier to wait until you get your 17 inches but this is what, how you're doing it. Once you're satisfied with the distance of it, what you can just do is trim an extra long strand and I want you to pull this loop up so that it pops out through front and then put in your hook in behind in the same last one, pull it into the inside. And I want you to just tug on that first strand. So now you have two strands of yarn to work with. Because you left them as extra long, it's easier to deal with. So you're just going to put both of these individually onto your needle and then you're just gonna weave it in and out of this brown section of the brown fibers and just go at least three, one, two, and three and then go back to the second one so you're thinking well, how are you gonna do that if it's 17 inches? You turn the project inside out. So once you have that done, that's secured in, so that's your first one and then you go and do the same thing with the starting strand just in and out. So what I want you to do is uh, this is how you're doing it but I'm gonna show you another example of the real one of what it's like to do all 17 inches and just to make sure I have most of it done but I have a space there that I wanna fill in and I'm gonna show you that. next. So I did mine at the very end so let's turn this inside out live on camera. So what I've done is that I've secured in all of the, see it's all worked in you know, on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna pull it back to the outside. So we wanna see the outside when we're going to apply the surface overlay and right where I have the stitch markers where I wanna put the last one. The problem is is that in order to get your hand all the way in the inside it's almost like you're working in a glove like this because you have to have the yarn coming in and your hand has to be completely in the inside to match. So my solution to that is that roll this up start at the base and work your way forward with the surface overlay so that you don't have so much to drag your hand on the inside. Okay, so this is where I would like to place in my next surface overlay. So let's uh, begin to do that now and let's grab our yarn. So we need the yarn to be on the inside, leave an extra long tail and I'm just using this hand and I'm just gonna push it right approximately where I see it here. And I'm gonna use my hook and I'm gonna go down into an area and pull a loop up. So I'm just using my hand on the inside to manipulate it around the hook. So I'm gonna get rid of my stitch marker because I got it where I wanted it. So going to the next one, I want to make sure that I'm using the yarn that is going to the ball. Okay, so I'm just picking the one that I want and then place it back in my hand and then use that one to wrap around the hook on the inside. I know you can't see what's going on but you're not gonna see it either. You just gotta feel for it. And then just keep in diving and you can feel the yarn 
with this hand is coming through as I'm pulling through. Like it's just feeding onto it, so uh, feeding on. Takes a bit of practice but I'm actually doing okay with it. And that's all I want, just a nice small example. And now the yarn strand leading to the ball, I wanna trim it and pull it up and put my hook on the inside on the last one. So what I want to do is in that last one that I just did, I wanna just pull the remaining through. Now what I would do then is continue to move along and continue to do that and then when you push this inside out, you're gonna see a gazillion of these strings that are ready to be sewn into position. It's easier to do it that way than to worry about it individually going in and out all the time. You also will over flex your uh, pillow too. So you're just gonna just weave it in and out like I showed you before and securing your loose ends and then trim off any extra. Um, I would recommend you probably could get away with not having to trim your yarns right down like I did but uh, I wouldn't want any of those strands falling out of the stitch work of your pillow. So please just secure in your, your loose ends and when we come back what we're going to do is that we're gonna stuff our pillow with the bolster and then we're gonna continue and finish off the other side of the pillow. Okay now that my pillow is complete I have all the lines. You can see it's just sporadic. It's just whatever I thought looked good. It doesn't really matter too much and now I'm going to put my pillow form inside here. So it's gonna be a nice tight fit and then once we do that then we can secure it and start closing off the other side with crocheting it. Let's do that. Stuff your pillow now and I'll come back here in a moment. So now that my pillow is on the inside what I want to do is grab the taupe color that we've been using and we're gonna do our first revolution. So you're just gonna, you can just join it to any one. It doesn't really matter. Go into the back loop only when you go to join and then just single crochet or just chain one that locks it and then single crochet into the same one. And what I want you to do is that I want you to apply one single crochet in each of the half double crochets all the way around into the back loops only. So please do that all the way around for round number one and this is going to start then decreasing in the next round to bring a final conclusion to the end of your pillow. So I've just come all the way around and I'm gonna join with the back loop of the next one and I don't have the linen color on, on point right now so I'm just going to create a slip knot and join it and pull through and through. So I'm using that to finish it off and let the taupe just fall out of the way. Keep it in place. Now what I would do is see this straggler, trap it in a position underneath this current stitches. So chain up one and do two single crochet together. So going into the same one, pull the, the loop through, go to the next back loop, pull through. You get three loops, pull through all three and that's a two together single crochet. You need to know that for this whole one. So the next nine in a row are each a single crochet. Leave the straggler down on top. So let's count it together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then the next two become two together. So into the next one, pull through, the next one, pull through, and then pull through all three. So nine and then two, nine and two. Please do that all the way around for the next round here on the ends. So I'm coming to the last one, back loop only and then I'm just going to join it then with the beginning single crochet but I don't wanna use that one to finish. I wanna use the taupe and then we're gonna move up to the next round. We're gonna continue to decrease even more. Let's move up to the next round next. So we're really gonna start decreasing now. So we're going to chain up one and do two together single crochet in the first two. So coming into the same one, pull through. The next one, pull through and pull through all three. Now the next three are by themselves. So one, two and three and then the next two are together. So we'll pull those two together and then the next three are by themselves. Please do that all the way around for the next round for the ends. So now coming all the way back around, go to the back loop only and we're gonna switch our color again to linen. So now let's continue next round and what we're going to do is single crochet, uh, sorry chain one and we're going to do the first two together and then this time it's going to be two in a row that's by themselves. So one and two and then the next two are together. So one, 
put those two together and do that same thing going all the way around. So two by themselves, two together. So now just come around again and I'm gonna go to the back loop only and switch out the color again to taupe and move on. So this one, this next round is chain up one and put the first two together. And then th there's gonna be one by itself. So one and so the next two are together. So one and two, put those together and then one by itself. Please do that all the way around for this round. Okay, that's it and we're going to join it to the first back loop and leave, let that drop. We're now officially done that yarn but I don't wanna deal with it yet. And I'm going to pick up for the last round and I'm just going to pull through. Now the last round, really quite simple, is that every stitch, we're gonna chain up one and then every two stitches become together. So two together in each going around. What I'm going to do is that off camera I'm going to secure this end in now and before I finish this round and then I will be back when this is complete. So I've now just come all the way back around. I'm going to slip stitch just to a regular stitch and I wanna keep an extra long tail here. So I want to use that tail then to weave in the remaining. So you're going to notice that there is a still a hole and so I'm just gonna pull this loop out through and insert my darning needle or my tapestry needle onto the end of that strand. And what I want to do is that I wanna gather the stitches that are left. Okay, so like a closed line, so just going in. Sorry, it's a really awkward angle because the pillow is so big. It's actually bigger than it looks, which is awesome. Not complaining. And I'm just going in and out of these stitches and I like to wait to the end to pull. So once I'm officially all the way around, I will then give it a good tug and it will show close in on itself. It's not my first rodeo kids. And I'm gonna come into the first one I started with and now I'm gonna pull. So just pull. Okay. Sorry, I hopefully that got on camera. Okay, so what I'm gonna do then is the remaining of this one here, I'm just gonna weave it in and out three times. And it should look pretty good. Nothing in life is ever perfect. And that's good. So what you wanna do now is that you wanna shape your log. Actually it's looking pretty flat as it is. And now I think I'm good to go. And let's just uh, take a look when we're at the log. So looking at the front side and then we worked our way all the way through. I just wanna shape it a bit and then just do the ending. And I actually never gained any stitches. I think I just might have stretched it when I rolled it inside out but I don't care because you know a tree is never just straight up. It, you could just say this is the base of the tree a little bit thicker. So that's it for now. This is my timber log birch style. Hopefully you can make one yourself and have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.